you were going up to the Clavin estate. I didn't think it prudent for us both to be absent simultaneously. In the event of crises... The I... only crises you have to worry about right now is keeping Mr. J.D. Clampett happy. Now get up there. Tell me, how did you like the flamingos? <laughs> what flamingos? I thought pink flamingos around the swimming pool would add a rather elegant touch. <laughs> Mr. Clampett is not a man educated to elegance. That will take time. Right now, there are more pressing problems. Of course, getting settled, the servant problem... Well, whatever they are, just get up there and solve them. Now, J.D. Clampett is this bank's largest depositor, and I'm making his satisfaction your responsibility. I accept the mantle of responsibility with which you have cloaked my shoulders, and I shall so conduct myself that if this great financial institution shall last a thousand years, people will still say, this was their finest hour. <laughs> Andy Wood, all right. Got a lot of pitch and tar in it. Ought to burn real good. Yeah. <laughs> That flimsy grate holds up. Granny? <laughs> Granny? This is the top of that tree trunk. The one I should split it up to? No, just leave it outside. Yes, sir. <laughs> this place ain't even got a wood box. Yeah, folks don't need much wood out here. Remember what Pearl says? It don't get cold. Yeah, I remember. It might not get cold in the day, but it sure freezes solid at night. How you know? i show you how I know. Every bit of food in this here storage bin is froze harder than a rock. <laughs> yes. Look. <laughs> Mighty thin skinned hog. <laughs> food up against the north wall. Tomorrow, we'll dig us a root cellar and we put all this stuff in it. Get through. Go on out there and catch us a chicken. Okay, Uncle Jack. How you know we got chickens? Place this size is bad to have chickens. Ain't all froze. <laughs> I ain't sure if it's a chicken, a goose, a duck, or what. Where is it? I couldn't catch it. That thing can outrun a jackrabbit. There ain't no goose or duck. Must be a chicken. If it is, I was right about things growing bigger out here. That thing was this high. A chicken? Ah, Jethro. Honest, it's got legs this long. Dibby's on the drumstick. Drumstick ain't much. Whoever gets that neck is eaten from now on. <laughs> Commences here and runs plumb up to here. You ain't forgot what I said about Granny's jug of liquor. I ain't been to Granny's jug. You have your in first. Honest, cross my heart. Where'd you see this chicken? Down by the cement pond. <laughs> cement pond? Uncle Jed, that pond is the fanciest thing you ever did see. Why, they are steps. So as the cattle can walk right down into it and get a drink. <laughs> and up at one end, there's a lady standing there made out of rock. And she's a pouring water out of a jar right into that cement pond. Oh. <laughs> well, that's how come that big old pink chicken to get away from me. Flew right over the top of that there rock lady, landed in that pond and swam like an otter. <laughs> Just a flapping them big old pink wings and holler. What color did you say that chicken was? It's pink. <laughs> Ain't I told you that stuff would stunt your growth? Scranny, I didn't. I didn't touch a drop. 
You and me is going to the woodshed. Nah, <laughs> Jethro, you swear to be telling the truth? So help me, Jefferson Davis. <laughs> you your hat off when you speak of the president. Well, he ain't president no more. I'll have no Yankee talk in my kitchen. Now, Jethro, you and me is going back out there and corner that chicken. Granny, you get your fire to go. Ellie Mae, you sweep up out front and keep your eyes open for that Miss Hathaway. I'm counting on her to take you in here and get you in the right kind of clothes. Come on. And you, I take it, are a domestic of some sort? Cleaning girl, housemaid? Just what are your duties with Mr. Clapper? Well, he sent me out here to sweep up, but he said you'd take me in hand and get me in the right kind of clothes and everything. Indeed I shall. We have a complete servant's wardrobe from chef to chauffeur. Come with me. <laughs> what in the name of Thomas Chippendale is this? Has <laughs> Mr. Clapper seen that this disgraceful and unsightly mound of debris? Oh, yes, ma'am. This is all here. Oh, what, what charming antiques. Just like you said, Jeffro. Rock lady pouring water into a cement pond. Yes, sir. And over there's where I seen that great big pink chicken. Only thing is, it don't sound like a chicken. It makes a kind of holler noise. <laughs> <laughs> Reckon you'd make a holler and noise, too, if you was to lay an egg like that. Man, oh, man. That's what I call an egg. Well, you won't have to worry about food now. Wait till she cooks this. <laughs> It's all the smoke. Stove don't work. <laughs> Probably just a stuffed up flu. Ain't got a flu. Ain't even got a stove pipe. Well, I'll get the shovel and a hoe and rake it out of there. <coughs> Do you keep this egg. <laughs> just like everything else out here. Froze solid. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Paul just can't wait to commence gardening. Apparently. However, as though I admire his enthusiasm, I must forbid him access through the main entrance. Now, tell me about the rest of the staff. Is there a chauffeur? A what? Someone who does the driving. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's Jethro. Of course, I don't reckon he can stay around very long. He's got to get back to Oxford and go to school. Oxford? <laughs> He attends Oxford University? Well, he just calls it school. Paul went to school there, too. Oh, yes. Old school time. Great pride, those Oxford men. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't stop before. Granny was having trouble in the kitchen. Paul, do I have to wear this year's stuff that Miss Hathaway... No, Hathaway's... no. There can be no appeal from Mr. Clampett's orders. Thank you, ma'am. Glad to see you taking the firm hand. <laughs> Ellie Mae, that's right pretty. Makes you look taller. She's got me walking on pegs. Uh, well, run in and show Granny. And uh, get rid of those old clothes, dear. <laughs> uh, granny, I presume, is the cook. Yes, ma'am, but she ain't too happy about it right now. I shall deal with her directly. Now, let's see. Maid, gardener, cook, chauffeur. Oh, uh, I understand Jethro is an Oxford man. You bet he is. I'm, uh... Quite anxious to meet him. I don't blame you. Fine looking young fella. Single, too. And he's on the lookout for a girl. Oh. 
I am only interested in the intellectual rapport which I would naturally have with an Oxford man. <laughs> I presume you went to Eton as a boy. 